Legendary here from Drake Wayne Gaming. It's something on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as five dollars. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming not safe for work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Caius, being a good guy, <clears throat> and you nearly killed me because of them too. What, you suddenly trust me with all this? I'm just saying, it doesn't add up. Don't pretend to know me. I've heard stories. They're just that. Stories. Let me help you. I shake my head. Just to say her words will even be helpful. The informers spew all kinds of nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. Don't insult me. You both said the same things. I wasn't informed. Alira was. He falters. What's the end game here? To avenge Alira? Why? She's gone. With a snarl, he rounds on me furiously. This time, I'm not sympathetic. I'm not intimidated. Rage fires within me like a muscle. It's becoming worryingly easy to flex. Don't. Don't act like you're the only one, Caius. You don't know me, either. He falters, and I'm not sure what I detect in his eyes. He backs away. Admiration or something else. Fair enough. What do you really want, Caius? I've heard all you're interested in is slaughtering the Autumn Monks. He laughs in outrage. You've grown fond of those secluded fucks. They're completely corrupt, but the clan still rely on Zephyr technology. Without them, it all disappears. And technology is a weakness, a cheat. Be rid of it all. The strong will adapt, and the weak aren't needed. The affliction in the Black Zones are bad enough, and you want to throw in survival of the fittest too? Everyone needs to stick together. He laughs at me. A budding philanthropist. Touching, but Alayla doesn't need hopeless romantics. The Black Zones swallowed those whimsical ideals long ago. Anyone who doesn't see that as stupid, dangerous, stupidly dangerous, or dangerously stupid. Man, aren't you just a ray of sunshine? He rolls his eyes as though utterly exasperated by me. Besides, the negative ones were born of the old knowledge, you know? Destroying it all seems like a start. They weren't born of it, more like enabled? Taking out the Automux won't change how fucked up Elayla is. He growls in disagreement. What, did you think the Black Sense would just disappear if you knocked the Great Barrier down? It wouldn't work. And what would work? I know Logan thinks there's a final solution to this madness. Never believed a word of it. Never wanted it. Not until you and Alira both spewed the same nonsense. There might be a solution. We don't know it yet. Then you don't have all the pieces. Her words might be the answer. Let me help. Let her help. Bite, what's your take on this? <clears throat> I don't trust him. Why didn't he mention all this sooner? He doesn't trust us, either. He has his own agenda. This isn't about helping us or the clans. He's not interested in understanding the Black Zones. No, it's about Alira. He just won't accept that she died for nothing. It's insane. Caius, insane? I'm not sure. There you go. <clears throat> Before I can offer an answer, the tiger folds his arms and sighs in resignation. I sense him dropping his stoic defenses to appear more genuine, more vulnerable, for a moment. She was trying to tell us something, Alex. Please. Maybe I do believe him. Whatever Alira said she was informed, she was right. But she also told him humans are dangerous. Him. A man barbaric enough to sew someone's eyes up and leave them to the demons. But the clans can't even comprehend a fate so horrible. The day we met, he tried to murder me. Didn't even flinch. I'll never be safe around him. Not yet, anyway. I'll think about it. The imposing tiger flicks his tail. For a moment, he seems furious. He opens his mouth, but the word never, words never pour out. Instead, he snarls something incoherent before twisting around and marching away. This is a pang of sympathy strikes me. He stops and turns around. You brought yourself back. I admire that. All thanks to you. How? <clears throat> I consider lying for a moment. There's something about Caius that makes me feel inclined to be honest, even if it reveals a weakness. Rage. Hmm. Just like I said, it's an old friend. Is it well? Tail flicking the saber tooth walks off. Whatever Elira said to him, it's not going to help us. We don't know that. Nobody has ever really listened to the informed like he has. Zana the Wise did. That turned out wonderfully for everyone involved, remember? Although Caius is made of stronger stuff, unless he's fostering any secret demon loving cults. Elira was right about humanity. Something else he heard from her might click with whatever with whatever we find. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is a man who went to war with his own family to rob Elayla of the old knowledge completely. He's dangerous. I say we tread carefully. I doubt Logan or Nitro would be comfortable bringing Caius into this. 
Aeon certainly wouldn't, given their history. Enough of this. I need to check that Logan's okay. After the unbridled horror of visiting the healers. <clears throat> yeah. Alex! Whoa, easy, big guy. The moment he spots me, Logan rushes from the foot of Aeon's hut and begins making a fuss of me, cupping my face and with his peers and peering closely at my wounds. You are okay. I smile, leaning into his grasp and feeling his feeling his paw pads against my cheek. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't worry about me. Did Maya give you anything for the pain? I have taken Dawn Lily. There is no longer pain. But Alex, I am worried that you were not okay. I'm all right. I met with Dravonia like he asked, and Milo. Nothing too exciting. But he rests his paw against my head. You are hurting. Here. Oh, I mean, well, I'm, I'm coping. It comes in waves. I feel better now that I'm with you. Hmm. These wounds will take time to heal. But you are here with me. And I'm not leaving either. You, you are certain. Certain. Hmm. Okay. He wraps his arms around me, squeezing tightly, and pulled to his chest and embraced. All his affection is overwhelming. I can sense his anxiety. It bleeds from him. Poor guy just needs so much reassurance. <clears throat> One second now. <clears throat> I sink into his embrace and rest my forehead against his chest. His snout noses into my hair, and I feel the heat of his breath as he exhales in relief. We stay there for a while. He really is important to me. I still have no idea how he bonded so fast. When it was just a physical attraction, it was easier. Although on some level, it always felt deeper than that. Alex. His voice is muffled, barely a whisper. His muzzle squashed into the top of my head. Yeah? Tell me how your day was. I snicker, grinding my face into his chest for a to revel in the comfort of his pelt. You're funny. Hmm. <clears throat> Logan, Alex. I pull away swiftly, my face turning scarlet. Yes, uh, yeah, sorry, we're here. Hi, hello. Nitro just smirks. Far be it from me to judge. Are you ready? Aeon is inside. We're all eager to hear what you have to say. Yeah, of course, let's go. Once Nitro's back is turned, Logan gives me a final nuzzle. Good human. Good hound. He earns one last head rub for me before we follow Nitro. About time, about time. You're well, Alex, you're well? Aeon guides me gingerly to a stool, insisting that I sit down. I'm all right, Aeon. Looking was more hurt than me. No lasting damage? Apart from my scars, everything should heal. Good. I never trust a black runner without scars. You are not trusting me. I do not have these. You do. Inside. And by the way, it seems like I've officially got an acolyte now. Oh, the tiger boy. Good show, good show. You sure it's not too soon? Nitro, you have seen Alex in the Black Zone. Tell me if you believe he can handle this task. Hmm, I've seen him hold back a horde of informed, if he can handle them. But I'm more concerned for your mind, Alex. I sense you losing yourself. I know, I was, and I... I did. <clears throat> That's why I want to tell you everything, the whole story. There's something big, something even Logan doesn't know. Alex, please don't tell them. You really should, buddy. We can't do this alone. All right, all right, if you're not ready. No, you're right, I, I need help. Tell them. Alex, there are things you have not said. I have a friend who needs us. The secret will get us both killed. I don't like where this is going, but you have my trust. And mine, boy, and mine! Let's hear it all, let's! Okay, um, you all know I arrived in Layla with no memories. <clears throat> Mm -mm. Well, it turns out they were there the whole time. When I started seeing the ruins of my people, it activated something. It started to gnaw away at me. I had to find out why. And I... I did. Should I make tea? Ha, huh, yeah. That story is gonna need a lot of tea. So I told them. I told them everything. All of it. Right from the start. I told Nitro about Bite, to listen to contemplative silence. I told them about Soul Creek, the gateway from which all this horror came from. I told them about my past, the flames, the howls, and my family. I told them about Glitch, every detail from his ascendancy to his destruction at our hand and the breaking of the algorithm. And finally, I told them what Bite really is, a demon, 
A spirit. A living entity. A silence thicker than stone choked the room while I spoke, but nobody was more uneasy than Bite. Boy, boy, I'm still struggling with this, I am. A demon in your head, really now? Yep, demonic possession. It's the truth. Nitro could sense him. That's what that was? I don't know about this, boy. I don't know. It doesn't sit right. It doesn't. I know. That's why we need your help, all of you. We need to find out where he comes from. But a demon in this very room with us. Gracious, gracious. The safer option would be to destroy it, no? Hmm. I scowl. His name is Bite. Take it easy, Aeon. But it, he, is still one of them. They hate me. He's far more scared of you than you are of him. He's not like the others. I'll defend him if I have to. Got it? Of course he's not like them. We're not in the Black Zone. He can't be a demon. After Ascendancy, demons can go wherever they want. Do whatever they want. An Ascended Demon? That's a thing now. Fantastic. Bite is one of these Ascended Demons. I am uneasy knowing this. But you trust him, don't you, Loken? Hmm, I do, but... Hmm. He's still the same person. The one who protected us, helped us help save those kids. This is true. I'm trusting you, Alex, so I'm trusting Bite. Look, and puffs his chest out for the out to the other two. Bite has protected Alex. We must determine where he has come from. This is our duty as Black Runners. I will also defend this demon. He is good. Hey, Alex. When I get a chance, tell Logan thank you. If it's true, that's big, big. It could change everything. Perhaps, but this knowledge is dangerous. We must be cautious. Dangerous knowledge is our specialty. Nitro turns to Loken, baffled. You really knew about this creature the whole time? I did not know that he was that he was being a demon, but this does not matter. Bite is good. Alex, he is not an intelligence A&I creature, as you said. A what? An AI. Zephyr machine intelligence. It was common technology, but they were never sentient. Bite thought he was one. We assumed the demons were two at first. We were half right. Explain. The demons are AI, but the code that forms them is supernatural somehow. It's not from this world. Glitch called the machines out there infants. They can evolve from their code into living entities, but they need humans to do it. That's a sentency. The steel shells are prisons for something far worse. Goodness, if the clans find out about this, this has to stay between us. Alex, you said that these ascended demons can only exist within a human mind. Not necessarily. Glitch only said the first possession had to be a human for ascendancy. Afterwards, who knows? They have a physical form of their own, no? Yes? I shrug. Bite only exists in my head. Glitch never had a chance to leave. It could just be simple simple mind parasites, or... I doubt mind parasites alone could have brought the Zephyr down. I am thinking this ascendancy is a birth. After birth, there is a growth. Glitch did not have time to do this. Hold, hold, hold! Here's a thought. Are there more of these ascended demons out there? Are there? Only if they endured after the Cascade. Glitch said he and Bite are the first for centuries. If there were others, surely we'd know. Don't assume that. Elayla is small. It's surrounded by the Black Zones, and we don't know what lies beyond. And the Black Zones themselves, where do they come from, hmm? Glitch didn't say. Or the Affliction? Nothing. Aeon shakes his head. I never imagined all this. I, do I didn't. It's above the old knowledge. Above science. It's all new. Impossible. Crazy. Or it's just a different kind of science, one we haven't seen yet. Nitro turns to me, frowning. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. I'm tired. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to all of our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names and credits, get access to Not Safe for More Contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye